Hello all you kitty cats and welcome back to another episode of Makeup and Mythology. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Cancer. If you're new here or need a refresher, Makeup and Mythology is a series where I go into the mythology behind all the different zodiac signs and I do my makeup at the same time. You don't have to be a Cancer to enjoy today's story, but I promise you that it will help you understand the Cancers in your life better. And it's pretty interesting if you enjoy mythology as well. You might learn a thing or two. Last week we covered Leo, which goes into the story of Hercules, and today involves him as well. So let's get into it. All myths have different versions and variations. I've sourced my script from a podcast on Spotify called Mythology by Parcast. It researches based on Greco-Roman mythology and history. A warning for today's story. Today's story contains mention of death, violence, and gore. About halfway between Gemini and Leo is a constellation that looks like an upside down Y. Or to some people, this looks like a crab with two huge claws. This is Cancer, a sign for people born from June 21st to July 22nd. The name Cancer actually comes from the Greek word for crab, karkinos. The crustacean in our story wasn't just a crab though. He was a terrifying giant crab um, who lived in the dreaded swamps of Lerna. So our story starts in Lerna. Now Lerna was a swamp, if you will. Get out of my swamp. Um, <laughs> it was like this gross decaying bog. Like think um, the bog of eternal stench if you've seen the labyrinth. I mean, if not, just think like, I don't know, like Shrek swamp, but like evil. <laughs> this swamp was like thick with nauseating fumes um, and sprinkled with Dead fish and frogs everywhere, yum. <laughs> in this swamp, you could hear the cries of the birds that lived, you know, like water birds, like ducks and stuff. Um, in the swamp, mixed with the screams of the recently deceased souls traveling to the underworld. Quite the swamp, I know. You see, deep within Lerna, there was a well that served as a portal to Hades. This portal was actually what the Hydra guarded. If you remember the story of the Hydra and Hercules, keep that in mind. Like if you've ever seen, yeah, keep that in mind because we'll get back to that. Lerna was a place that housed many creatures, witches, and wraiths, as well as the daughters of Danaeus. Now, you might not know who that is, but let me tell you, I researched them and they have quite the motherfucking story. They were women who, um, they were like 49 women who killed their husbands and buried their heads in the swamp. I know, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother episode. So anyways, that just tells you a little bit about the um, set in the scene about the swamp that we're in today. But most importantly, this swamp was home to our crab, Cancer. Well, actually his name is Carquinos, but we'll get into that. It was believed that the crab had made its way into the swamp from the sea. But why it had stayed in the swamp was a mystery. Perhaps it was just too big to go anywhere else. You know, it probably traveled to the swamp through a river, but it was probably too big to travel back down this river. Regardless, this bog was its home and it did not care for intruders. If you're familiar with the story of Hercules and the Hydra, it was a battle between our well-known hero and a snake-like monster with nine heads. Fighting the Hydra was the second act of labor performed by Hercules, the first being his fight with Leo, which we covered last week, if you remember. Hercules entered this swamp with his nephew, Iolaus, with visions tunneled on defeating the Hydra. As they made their way to the Hydra's well, the crab, Carquino, silently followed them from the moment they entered the swamp. So they had somebody trailing them and they weren't even aware because they had their sights set on the Hydra. But you always gotta be aware of your surroundings. A good hunter should know that. So the battle between Hercules and the Hydra begins. Hercules roared with fury in this battle with the Hydra as he hacked away one of the necks of the serpent. The neck sprayed out thick black blood that sizzled and fumed when it hit the lion's cloak wrapped around Hercules. If you remember, this is the Nemean lion that he's wearing. The acid in the blood burned a hole in the pelt and Hercules tore it off with his teeth, letting it extinguish when it hit the swamp water. So much for impenetrable, right? So this hydra, right? If you recall, its heads actually double when they grow back. So they're cut like to grow back in its place. When Hercules first met the hydra, it only had three heads, but then he chopped them all off, six grew back, and he made his way up until nine until he was finally like, 
Maybe I should come back to this later, like rethink this uh, whole strategy of mine. So now Hercules was back. He had a new strategy. Um, so he starts chopping off the heads and then he held the stump, like the neck. Um, as the new heads were about to grow back, he called forth his cousin Iolaus and this scrawny kid about like 17 years old came over holding a torch above his head, his little head, and he pressed the flame against the hydra stump. Uh, cauterizing the wound worked, but the pair were so focused on the enemy before them that they didn't even notice a pair of black shiny eyes watching from behind them. So Carquinos had actually been watching them from the moment they had entered Lerna. Uh, he noticed the taller figure had the posture of a man but with dark hair and a mane of a lion. It was a creature unlike any he had ever seen before and his curiosity kept his eyes following them. Now, it's unclear if this crustacean had a like relationship with the Hydra, if he cared for the Hydra. Um, however, it wouldn't be unlikely. You see, most crabs uh, have been proven to partake in like symbiotic relationships where they like um, there's been crabs before that host like sea urchins on their back. It creates uh, like a feeding environment for the sea urchin and then the crabs will actually use the sea urchins as like weapons against enemies. Uh, so they've been proven to have like these type of symbiotic relationships. So who are we to say that he didn't have this type of relationship with the Hydra? That was a mouthful. All that can be said for certain is what the crabs saw and what it did in response. So Hercules and Iolaus had their strategy, you know, they were Hercules would chop off the heads and Iolaus would help like cauterize the wounds so that the heads wouldn't grow back. Uh, they had worked the Hydra down to about six heads, uh, but the Hydra was sensing like the danger it was in, you know? So it started to fight harder back. You know, it was more vicious. It was snapping its jaws at Hercules and slowly pushing him further back into the swamp. It wrapped one of its necks around Hercules' leg and caught him off guard. Hercules stepped his other foot back to try to balance himself, uh, his foot landing in the swamp water. It was then that the crab took its opportunity and clasped his claw around Hercules' foot. Ow. This huge crab, the size of a boulder, literally clasps his claw around Hercules' foot. Like, I don't know about y'all, but my foot would be broken. But, I mean, he's a demigod, so like, I don't know. You know, let's give him some credit, I guess. Hercules cried out in pain and surprise. Hercules was actually experiencing the worst pain he had ever experienced in his entire life allegedly up until that point at least uh even worse pain than when he lost one of his fingers to the nemean lion which i didn't know about when i was filming the leo video but yeah apparently hercules did not kill the nemean lion unscathed he lost one of his fingers to the lion i feel like breaking your foot would be worse than losing a finger yeah because it's hard to break your foot but that's like your whole foot that you just lose one finger. Yeah. yeah. Imagine the crab's claw being like, Hercules got his foot stuck in a bear trap. But, okay, here's the thing. So he was experiencing the worst pain he could ever imagine. Um, Hercules actually denied help from his nephew in this moment. Uh, but the Hydra was taking advantage of Hercules, being caught off guard. Um, and the Hydra started striking and biting away at him. So Hercules was in trouble, but he was like, no, I allow, don't help me. I got this, bro. Well, bro, I got this. Well, it was technically his nephew, but you get the gist. Hercules was most known for his strength, but something notable that was often forgotten about Hercules was his rage. Yeah, Hercules got mad anger issues, and it doesn't help that he's super strong. But Hercules is the type to, like, punch the wall when he gets mad, or, like, rage quit, you know what I mean? So, like, Hercules is no most known for his strength, but his rage was also just as relevant. Hercules cut the two Hydra heads uh, that were attacking him, and after getting his foot free from the crab, he brought it crashing down onto the crab's back, stomping four times until he had split the crab's shell and his foot crashed into its soft innards. He then kicked the crab back into the swamp and out of his way as he finished the battle with the Hydra. So he was like, fuck this shit, bro. Why the fuck you on my foot? Get the fuck out. Like. Hercules go mad stupid. He go crazy, okay? I'm crazy on the crab. <laughs> he go crazy on the crab. <laughs> the crusty crab. <laughs> Give me the formioli. 
The crab lay in the soft mud with its guts oozing out into the swamp. The hydra lay with its last head cut off and cauterized. The battle was over and Hercules and Iolaus were gone. Did they stop at the sight of the crab? Did Hercules remember the last time his rage gripped him so? We do not know, but what we do know is that this was when someone else entered the swamp. The queen of the gods, Hera. She came for the Hydra just as she came for the Nemean lion. Both stood a good fight against the hero, Hercules, a man whose name was a constant reminder to her of Zeus's infidelity. She plucked the Hydra's spirit from its body and placed it into the stars right next to the Nemean lion. As Hera turned to leave the swamp is when she saw the body of Carquinos laying with its guts spilled out in the swamp. When Hera turned to leave is when she saw the body of Carquinos. She ran to it and cradled its massive body in her arms. She said, this was not your fight, but perhaps I made it yours when I sent them into your home. The least she could do was give him a new home. She kissed the crab on its shell and placed its soul in the stars next to the lion and the hydra all proud monsters that served her faithfully. Centuries later, the crab is still in its home in the heavens. And that, my dear friends, is the story of Cancer. Cancer's appearance in mythology may be brief, but there's no question that he's well suited for the zodiac sign. The crab's outer shell and powerful claws make a good analogy for people born under this sign. Cancers are said to be exceptionally careful about who they open up to. They present a tough exterior to hide the fact that their true self is very emotional, sensitive, and intuitive. When a Cancer is threatened, they are likely to lash out, even against dangerous foes. The brief role of Cancer in Hercules' labors reveals a deeper connection between the myth and astrology. It's said that Cancer's heart is always at home and they will do anything to defend it. They are also this way with the people that they are closest to. Cancers are described as being particularly loyal to the lucky people that they choose to be close with. So Hercules may have thought that this crab had nothing to do with his battle, but if you walk into someone's home and start fighting their friends, don't be surprised when you get pinched. So that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope my Cancers out there appreciated their story. I think it's a bittersweet story, um, mostly on the bitter side, hence why I got tears going on today. I hope you enjoyed today's video, I hope you learned a thing or two, and I hope to see you guys next time. I might not do an astrology video next time, I might do a vlog next week, but regardless, stay tuned, like, subscribe, leave me a comment about what you want to see next from me, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!